Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP episode from JG Games, and today we are going to be talking about Blender. So I'd like to apologize, first of all, for not having a tutorial out the past couple weeks. I've been working on two tutorials for about a month or so, and I have been unable to finish them because I cannot get these stupid tutorials right. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. This isn't what I plan to have out today, but this is going to be a great tutorial, and I'm really excited to do it. And I feel like I should redo this from my old videos. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a crash course into Blender. Now, if you don't know what Blender is, Blender is an open source 3D modeling suite. So it can do everything from video editing to special effects to photo compositing, so like Photoshop to 3D modeling, it does it all. And it is an open source free software. So we're not gonna be talking about all of that today, but we're gonna be talking about the main menus that you'll need to know to get started. That's why this is a crash course. It is completely open source and it does everything that Maya can do. So let's go ahead and open it. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our web browser and then you're just gonna click this button right here and it's gonna take you to here. Now it should give you different options based off of what operating system you're using or you can just always go to right here and download the version right there. So I've already installed it, but all you have to do is click download and then follow through with the setup and then you should be good to go. So I'm just gonna double click on my icon on my desktop to open it. And you should see this right here. Now I'm running 2.78 right now, so some of these may be a little bit different, but there shouldn't be that much different from 2.79, which is the newest version at the time I'm making this video. So I'm just gonna click on the outside of the screen just so we can do this. And you'll notice how many buttons there are. There are so many buttons. On the left side, you have all these different tabs, all kinds of different buttons. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this. So the main reason I'm doing this is just to show how Blender really works. So right here, we've got all of our different windows and we actually have about four different windows open right now. So this is big gray window right here is our 3D view. Now this is where we're gonna be doing all of our 3D stuff. Now what this does is this allows us to move around in 3D space. So to move around the 3D space, it's middle mouse button, hold, click and hold down to rotate, middle mouse button and shift to pan, and then scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So after using it for a little bit, you can start moving it around as much as you like, and it becomes very natural the more you use it. Now there are also some other commands that I think I'd like to point out. You have the numpad that you can actually use to navigate around your scene because it is hard to line up a view. So you can use your numpad to line up the different sides of your view. So for this right here, if I tried to line it up right here, you'll notice that it's pretty hard to get it because there's different edges and stuff. So what we can do is we can just hit three on the numpad and that will put us immediately on the side view. But you'll notice that we're still in 3D space. We can hit five to go into orthographic view, which basically makes everything flat. This mode makes it really easy with working with 2D objects or 3D sides of objects. Control and three will give us a left. Control and seven will give us bottom. So those are just a couple of the ones that you need to know. I'm gonna hit five to jump out of orthographic mode again, and let's just keep going on with this. I'm also gonna rotate my view because I was upside down for a while. Okay, so this is the 3D view. That's really all I need to do with this. So there's also a couple ways to manipulate your objects. So to manipulate the objects in here, you have a couple of different options. First of all, you'll notice that this section down here has a bunch of different options. This is the only section you need to really worry about right now. So right now we've got arrows selected. Now this is our translate. So what we can do is we can just do this and we can drag up and down on the axis. This is the X axis. The red line is X. The green axis is Y and the blue axis is Z. So then we have these down here. We can click on this one right here to rotate and then you can just grab right here and drag around. And then we have these right here and these are our scaling. We can scale on the Y we could scale on the X, or we could scale on the Z. All of this work. Now, if we wanted to select all of these at once, we could just hold Shift and click on all of these, and then we could scale, rotate, and translate on all of the axes. So this makes it really useful. We could grab on the Y and rotate it some, and then we could grab on the X and scale it out, and then move it down on the Z. So that's our 3D view. That's all you need to know about the 3D view. Then we have a couple of these options down here. We have object mode. These are all of your different modes. We're only gonna focus on object and edit mode right now, but I'm just gonna briefly touch on about what these are. Texture paint allows you to paint textures like you would in Substance Painter onto your mesh. Weight paint allows you to paint the weight of bones when you do rigging and stuff, like for making a humanoid character. Vertex paint allows you to paint certain vertices, and sculpt mode allows you to use a sculpting feature to actually mold an object like you would something like clay. But the really 
the main ones you're going to be using, at least in our case, are object and edit mode. And these can be switched back and forth by hitting the tab key. So I'm going to stay in object mode. This is where you're going to be moving all of your objects around in the scene. So I'm going to move this up and I'm going to move this to the right. You'll notice that this orange dot stays in the center of the object. And that's because it's supposed to stay there because that's the center of the object. Now, if I hit tab and then I have all of these vertices selected, so I hit A twice to select both of these vertices, then I click the green button, you'll notice that the orange dot stays where it is. And that's because we've now offset our object from the origin of the point, which is a real problem to do. You don't really want to do that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to move it back. And that's all really there is to it. You want to keep this orange dot at the center of the object, unless you have a very specific reason why you need it to be somewhere else. Now, selection is pretty weird in Blender. With object and edit mode, it's actually right click to select. So I'm going to right click and I can hold shift and select faces by just right clicking. So you notice that if I select all four of these vertices, this entire square goes orange and then we can just move this face right here. So I can move this on the Y and move it out like this. And we can also scale and rotate these faces. So if I sh turn on these options again, I can actually scale this face up on the X or I could scale it on the Y to make like a knife blade or something. And you can't really scale it on the Z in this case, but that's just a way to do it. So I'm gonna turn these off again. Basically edit mode allows you to edit the actual components of the mesh and object mode allows you to move it around more easily. Now let's say you wanna do a bulk selection. What do you do then? So I'm gonna hit A to deselect. A is select and deselect all. So you can use B to do rectangular selections, or you can use C to kind of paint select. So you can select like a whole thing, or you could draw something on an object and then delete those faces. Both are very useful. But let's talk about these windows on the side because these are very important. This is your hierarchy view up here. This is like layers in Photoshop. So this is where you can see all of your objects, all of the different components. You can even hide and deselect objects. This is basically like your layer select place in Photoshop. Then you have your properties window right here. This is where you're going to be doing the bulk of your actions. So you have the render tab right here. This allows you to mess with how you're going to render out your final product. Now, because we're not making any artwork right now, and because I'm also a horrible artist, I don't use this tab very much, but this is very useful for rendering out. You got options such as resolution, quality, aspect ratio, motion blur, performance, post-processing, and output. You got all kinds of stuff that makes it really easy to render out your artwork in Blender. And you have render layers. Render layers are like physical layers of objects. So what you could do is you could put a bunch of layers into one render layer and then make another one and put a bunch of other layers in there. Now you actually have layers down here. We're not gonna be talking about them because they're basically just like separate views. You can select a bunch of them and put them in one render layer and then put a bunch of other options and put them in another one. There's lots of different uses for this. I rarely use them, so I don't know much of them, but I do know of several artists that I've talked to recently that have said that this is one of the core features of Blender itself. And then we have scene up here. Now this is gonna be some of the key parts with rendering. We're not gonna talk about that much. Basically, this is where you're gonna set up your camera, assign it in here, your background, and your active clip. Cameras are more for rendering, so we're not gonna be talking about it that much. Then we have world. These are just options. You can change the horizon color and the ambient color when you're rendering. All but again, all these are rendering options. You have object. Now this is gonna be key things like location, rotation, scale, all kinds of things that you're gonna be using with your actual object. You can set parent objects. You can add it to a group. You can display its name or its axis or whatever all on here. And then we have this up here. Now this is object constraints. Now this is mainly for working with rigging. So you have copy location, rotation, all kinds of different things right here. I've used this mainly for either tracking or for working with kin inverse kinematics. They're very useful right here. And then you have the modifiers tab. Think of it like filters in Photoshop. So we can go, for example, array allows you to duplicate the object over an axis. It basically makes complex operations pretty simple. It does a lot of the work for you. Then you have mesh. Now this is gonna be all of your vertices and all kinds of things like that, like vertex groups, shape keys, UV maps, vertex colors. Basically anything that has to do with the vertices is going to be in your mesh tab. Moving on, we have material. This is going to be the color. This is gonna be how your object actually looks in a render or when you export it. So you can add materials, you can delete materials, you can do wireframe materials. You can really do it all with this material thing. You could technically do all of your texture work in Blender because it's so good. And then you have your textures tab. Now this is gonna be where you actually import images and stuff. So what you could do is you could import an image on here and put it onto a material in here. That's basically all you use that for, but you can use it for lots of different things as far as generating maps, generating UV layouts, all kinds of things. 
as far as working with the materials and the textures. And the next tab is particle effects. Now this allows you to do particle effects based off of the object that you have created. Now I don't work with particle effects that much, but what I have worked with is that this is actually a pretty good particle effects system. And then we have physics. Now this is mainly for rendering out animations, but you can do all kinds of collisions and rigid body. Basically what you can do with Unity, but you can do it and render it out. So those are basically all of the many tabs up here. There are so many of them. Let's go ahead and let's head on to this bottom window down here. So this is going to be your animation window. So this is where you can add animation keyframes and stuff. So we're not going to be worrying about animation right now because that kind of goes farther than the crash course, but you can know that you can actually move your timeline by clicking on the green thing. This is your playhead and moving it up and down. And then let's go over to this final tab over here and then we'll be done. So you notice that we have a bunch of different options. I'm going to tilt my head sideways so I can read this. You've got tools, create, relations, animation, physics, and grease pencil. So here you see you've got your bunch of buttons. You've got translate, rotate, and scale. When you select an object and click on these, you can actually just click on that and then move it around. You can do the same with rotate and scale. You can also mirror an object, which makes it really nice. You can duplicate objects. You can duplicate the object and then link it together, or you can join two objects together. You can do smooth shading, which basically just smooths out all the vertices. Think of it if you took sandpaper to a piece of wood or something. You can have flat, which basically just inverts what smooth did. And then you got data transfer and data layout. Don't really know what those do because I really don't understand how the data stuff works. Then you have the create tab. Now this allows you to create primitive objects. So you can add anything from a plane to a cube, circle, all the way down to text, an armature. So this would be like an armature bone cameras, speakers, all kinds of stuff. Then you have relations. Now this allows you to group objects together. This allows you to remove stuff from groups. You can set parents of objects. You can link data f between two different objects and you can make local linked objects as well. I don't understand about 50% of the words I just said there, but that's basically what it does. You have animation. Now this allows you to do inserting and removing keyframes. It allows you to create motion paths based off of different paths that you create. And you can also bake actions such as physics to an animation so that it doesn't bog down your computer every time you render it. And then you have physics. Now this is your physics tab. This allows you to add all kinds of physics effects. You can change the shape, change the mass of all the different objects. You're really gonna wanna know how to do this when you do stuff like this. Now I do not work with physics that much. I've just used the default objects, but I have seen several videos where this is a very important tab to know how to use. And then finally, we've got grease pencil. I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. I'm gonna click on the draw button. You'll notice that I get a little paintbrush as a cursor. And let's say that I didn't like this edge right here. So all I can do is I can just draw a circle around it and then it would go away because that's how I've set it. So that's basically all there is to it. You've got all these windows. There are so many buttons in this application. I can never explain all of them but that's basically a crash course in the blender. So if you're looking into getting into 3D modeling, 3D art, all kinds of stuff, this is the place to do it. Now, if you wanted to do something besides 3D modeling, then here's what you would do. You could go up to here, and then you notice that we've got a ton of different places like motion tracking, scripting. You could actually make games inside of this. You could do UV editing, you could do video editing, you can do it all inside of Blender. I've actually edited a video inside of Blender before and it was hilarious because it was one of those things where like you never expect you could actually edit in Blender and I actually did it. You can do compositing, so like making materials or you could do like Photoshop style stuff with compositing, very nice feature to have. Game logic, this is where you could script an entire game, now, but I honestly have no idea how it works. That's basically all there is to Blender. It's a very great software. You can use it for all kinds of different things, video editing, animating, compositing, Photoshop. But think about it like all of the famous applications all squished into one open source thing that is actually really, really great, and it's really well made. That's basically all there is to it, but I wanna know what you guys think about this crash course. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If this video sucked, then you know what to do, but if it didn't, drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Don't forget to check out our website, social media, and merch, as well as our community Discord server. All of those links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.